Hi everybody, thanks for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Today I think we're going to have a really interesting video if you're looking into upgrading your solar. A company called OptiSolex sent me two products. This one here is their Solar Bag 400. Can you believe it? That is a 400 watt solar panel. And this, their Solar Brick S1. This is essentially a solar charge controller. And it's a very cool solar charge controller, I have to say. Let's get into looking into these two products. We're going to compare them to other products as well. Let's get into it. I will be comparing the products from OptiSolix with other products. The first thing I want to show you is the size and weight differences. Now, this is 400 watts of solar, but actually it's two 200 watt solar panels zipped together. They can stay together as 400 watts or you can remove them and use them as two 200 watt panels. That is a very good thing. Now this here is actually a 200 watt solar panel. This is also a 200 watt solar panel. So you can see the size difference alone is incredible. But here's something else. These two solar panels weighed together are 30.8 pounds according to my scale. I weighed this one 17.3 pounds on my scale. So size and weight, there's a big advantage to the OptiSolix. Now let's see about performance. Let's take a closer look at the packaging of the Solar Bag 400. As I said, two independent panels. So on this side we have a bag with the cables required and on the other side there's a bag for the other solar panel with the cables required included inside and it all comes apart very easily and unzips very easily. It's a very well made case. It's going to last a long time and it's going to protect the solar panels inside. So let's take it out of the package. Unclips very easily and unfolds. That's pretty simple deployment. 200 watt solar panel here, 200 watt solar panel there. They work together, but they can also work independently. These are N type cells, very good quality cells, bonded extremely well. So they are flexible. When something is bonded well and they're made to be flexible, that means that they're gonna last a long time. They thought of everything when it comes to a portable panel because it may not always be able to lay perfectly flat like this. It's going to get moved around, it's going to get bent, it's going to get twisted. These are designed to last a long time. They come apart quite easily. Just like that. And as I said, each one has a bag included with the cables required. So let's hook this up to a power station. Get some numbers. One thing to note is you can charge directly from this solar panel on each of these controllers. There are spots to plug in USB A and USB C for charging direct from the panel. As you can see, I have two solar panels here. We're going to test them under identical conditions. On this side is the OptiSolex 200 watt panel. Over here, we have another 200 watt panel. We're going to plug them both into this Anchor Solex power station. Now, if you're using a power station with a built-in solar charge controller, you don't need that S1 brick. That's only if you're charging up a battery. We're going to get into that later. But let's plug these in under identical conditions and get some numbers. Okay, for starters, let's plug in the OptiSolex 200 watt solar panel to the power station. See what happens. It's going to take a little bit for the solar panel to start charging and to settle down and I hope you can get the readout of this app. But we're at 17% charge. Now it's starting to charge. The OptiSolix panel is right now at 69 watts, still rising 98 watts. And remember this is a 200 watt solar panel, 133 watts. 149, 160, 161 watts, 
So I think it's going to settle down there at 161 watts. Now that's pretty good. That's about 80% efficiency. So 161 watts with the OptiSolex 200 watt solar panel. Now let's unplug that and we'll plug in the other solar panel, see what happens. So it's just starting up now. As I said, it takes a little bit for it to get settled in and to come to its full potential. So we're sitting at 30, 59 watts, 77 watts, it's still rising. I remember the OptiSolux was 161 watts. Let's see where the other solar panel gets us. We're at 130. 129, so I think it's going to settle in at around 130. Oh, 132. Give it some time just to be fair. So 133. 133 is the top for the other solar panel. So 161 compared to 133, that's a pretty significant difference. So here's the OptiSolux S1 brick and as you can see it's tiny and it's also very lightweight it is a MPPT charge controller IP68 so very weather resistant and it has a 10 year warranty now it's also plug and play the inputs and outputs here are MC4 connections very easy to set up not all solar chargers are like this and it also operates under low voltage so it's going to be the safest technology for your battery system so let's plug this in and see how it works. Great connections here. So let me explain what I've done here. I have connected the two OptiSolix solar panels together. I've zipped them up and I've made the electrical connection using the MC4 connections. Very easy to do, plug and play as we said. I have the battery connected to these terminals. Now I'm going to connect it to the OptiSolix brick. Again, very much plug and play. Connect to the battery first. Now we're going to connect to the solar panel. Positive and negative. So let's check out the app on the Vader battery, see how much power is coming in to the Vader battery. So very simple to make these connections, truly a plug and play unit. So I have the OptiSolex solar panels connected together and using the S1 brick, I have it connected to the Vader battery. So using the Bluetooth connection, I can see at the moment I'm at 306 watts. That is pretty good for a potential 400 watts. It's going up and down 308 so that is an excellent excellent amount of power to be coming in with a 400 watt solar panel so what I have going on here is one of my control panels connected to the OptiSolux S1 brick and that is connected to the Vader battery so let's check the Bluetooth app on the Vader and see how many watts are coming in using the S1 brick and then I'm going to connect it to this solar charge controller. It's an MPPT controller as well. And we'll get a quick comparison. At the moment, that 200 watt solar panel is pulling in 118 watts using the OptiSolex brick. So there's 118, 119 watts. Let's call it 119. Now we're going to change solar charge controllers and see if it makes a difference. Okay, so let's connect to this solar charge controller. Battery first. There we go, and now we connect to the solar panel, and we'll check the input we have. Plug and play, that's the way to go.
Okay, so we're using the same battery, we're using the same solar panel. The only difference is I swapped out the OptiSolix S1 brick with my existing MPPT controller. And as you can see, we're only pulling in 99 watts, 99 watts. So they both are MPPT controllers. They both claim over 99% efficiency, but the OptiSolix was getting better numbers under exactly the same conditions. So let's run another comparison. I'm going to hook up my OptiSolix 200 watt solar panel to the Vader battery using the S1 brick. And I wanna see how much it'll charge up that battery in 15 minutes. Then I'll connect my control panel in exactly the same way for 15 minutes. See which one charges the battery up the most in a 15 minute period. Okay, so the Vader battery is at 44%. We're bringing in 130 watts. Let's start a 15 minute timer. There we go, 15 minutes on the clock. We'll come back and see how much the battery rose from that 44%. Okay, so we're coming up on the 15 minutes. Three, two, one. All right, 15 minutes. The anchor, let me stop this. In 15 minutes, the OptiSolix solar panel brought the Vader battery up 3%. Not bad for 15 minutes. So you can imagine what would happen if you had it connected all day. So let's hook up our control solar panel using the OptiSolix S1 brick, and we'll see what it does in 15 minutes. Okay, so now I have our control solar panel connected to the OptiSolix Brick S1. Let's set the timer for 15 minutes and we'll see how much juice goes into the Vader battery in 15 minutes. Okay, there's 15 minutes elapsed and it looks like the OptiSolix was a little better brought in three percent my control panel only brought in two percent of the total capacity of the vader battery so in those days when there's not a whole lot of sun minutes can matter and that one percent can matter that was my overview of the optisolix solar bag 400 and the optisolix s1 brick now what do i think well i think it had some definite advantages over my previous system first of all size that's a 400 watt solar panel and it easily can slip over my shoulder i can move it around it's in a very nice package and it only weighs half of what my other system was just over 17 pounds for this my other two solar panels over 30 pounds so size and weight alone is a big advantage now not only is this a 400 watt solar panel as i showed it's two 200 watt solar panels so you can unzip them, move them around camp. You can lend half to a friend, use half yourself. It's very versatile. So versatility is really good when you're bringing things out camping. Now, performance wise, it performed better than my other solar panels in every way, I think. Uh, they perform better, they're smaller and they're lighter. So really you can't ask for more than that. And as far as the S1 brick, well, it outperformed my other MPPT solar charge controller. They're both MPPT controllers, but the S1 definitely did outperform my other one. So I really like this setup. So I will leave a link to OptiSolex. You can check them out. You can check out current pricing, different deals that they might have going on. But I think they're definitely worth checking out. Thanks very much for watching. I do appreciate the time you spend on the channel. Take care, everybody. We'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.